Hey folks, and welcome to this demonstration of my Marathon GSAR uh, mechanical watch, my first mechanical watch review. And the reason I'm reviewing this particular watch is it does rely on electrons uh, for part of its operation. So uh, Marathon are a Canadian company who supply watches to the uh, US government. And most of their watches actually say underneath the Marathon there, it says US government. Um, but they do produce an unmarked version uh, for not only for retail sales, but also for those parts of the US government that don't want people to know they're part of the US government if they're doing something slightly secret. So the it's a diver's watch. GSAR stands for, I'm not sure what the G stands for, it stands for search and rescue. So it's, it's designed for being used at sea. Um, it, uh, it's got these uh, tritium tubes which uh, on the hands and also for the hour markers which are used for illumination. And uh, tritium is a radioactive isotope for hydrogen and its symbol is H3. There's a little uh, nuclear symbol there uh, but you don't need to worry because tritium, uh, the, the products of tritium are uh, are very harmless and they can't travel through more than about six millimeters of air. They can't travel through the glass at all and they can't even travel through the uh, the dead skin on your hand on the outside. So it's a very safe form of illumination compared to the older radium watches. So uh, yeah, tritium is a radioactive isotope of hydrogen and uh, a normal hydrogen atom consists of a single proton and an electron, so the lightest of the elements. Um, whereas tritium uh, has a a single proton and electron plus two neutrons um, but it's not entirely stable and uh, it does decay into helium-3 which consists of one proton and two neutrons plus the electrons so basically what happens in that radioactive decay is one of the neutrons decays to a proton and electron and that electron flies out at high speed and in these tubes it hits a uh, phosphorus coating on the inside causing it to glow so uh, a tiny amount of mass is lost in this process and that's converted into pure energy um, and the amount of energy is, uh, is Einstein's famous uh, equation the energy is the mass lost times the speed of light which is a very big number so it's a tiny mass but uh, you can actually see the light because it's such a, a high speed um, so the half-life for tritium is 12 and a half years or 12.3 years so over time, these what the hands will get dimmer and dimmer. So after 12 years, they'll be half as bright as they were when it was new. Um, but this, the older watches with the radium suffered from a similar problem, although that was due to the um, the phosphorus coating actually wearing out rather than the decay. So although they stopped glowing, um, they were still just as dangerous. So a much safer form of illumination for watches. Um, it's, a, it's an automatic watch, uh, it's got a, uh, an ETA 2824-2 movement in it which is a very reliable workhorse used in lots of other watches including Omegas. Um, it's got a unidirectional bezel so you can only turn it one way, can't turn it that way. And that is um, something that you need for a dive watch because if you're timing your dive you don't want to accidentally move it the wrong way and end up diving longer than you intended to because that's dangerous. And on the back of the watch, um, I'm not sure you'll be able to actually read it, I've got it the wrong way up there, but it does say, uh, one of the things it says on the back, amongst many other things, it says the date the watch was made, this one was January 2013, so you know how long your tubes have got to go, but it also says, mentions ISO 6425, which is the international standard for dive watches. And the significance of that is that this, it means that this particular watch, every single watch, has to actually be tested, not just a sample, but every single watch for its for various things, including its waterproof. This, so it's been tested to 125% of its rated uh, 300 meter depth rating. Um, it's also tested for shock resistance. Um, the unidirectional bezel is part of that standard. It's also tested for magnetic resistance up to 4,800 angstroms per meter. Not quite sure what that means. Uh, it's also tested in salty water, and the, the strength of the uh, of the strap or band is tested. It also needs to have an extendable strap or band. Obviously, the strap that's quite easy, you just move it to the next hole. With a bracelet, that's a bit more difficult. Um, but the solution is, I'll show you here, I ping it there, a little extension built into the bracelet there for putting over a wetsuit. 
So a nice little feature there if you're into diving, which I used to be, but haven't done for a long time. So I'm just going to show you uh, how it looks when it's glowing. So bear with me while I turn the light off. There we go. It's not super bright compared to you know a, a freshly lit, um, uh, you know normal watch, but it will stay this bright all all day and all night. So uh, after about ten seconds, it's as bright as a normal watch, and it stays going all night. And in fact, for twelve and a half years, if you get, end up getting stuck underground. So that's it, my Marathon GSAR. Hope you've enjoyed this one, and let me know what you think about these uh, mechanical watches. Cheers. Bye.